Hi, my name is Paul Worrell. I'm the founder and chief developer of um, Zonified. Um, today, I thought I'd talk to you about why we managed to get the support of registry services in local authorities um, in the UK for helping the public use the Zonified digital wallet um, for securing activities. Uh, it'll be myself talking and potentially a large fly that I'm sharing the office with. The first compelling proposition was that um, these registry services, which officiate life events like marriage, death and birth, um, they could actually generate additional revenue from the public, uh, providing them with a useful service, um, but without changing any of their processes. Um, it's just literally one small additional uh, step that they have to offer the public, um, and that's it. So when they're suffering from austerity and they're looking for new services, it was very easy to generate some additional revenue um, using uh, Zonified. The second uh, compelling proposition was that they didn't need to procure any technology, they didn't need to tender uh, any technology or provide invitations to tender, um, and there was no support costs. All they do, just like the public, is have uh, access to a Zonified digital wallet and then register the identity that they were going to use for providing the authoritative acknowledgement. Third um, was the billing process. So billing processes um, we just assume would be difficult uh, to persuade to accommodate a new sort of uh, process. So um, there was no billing process required other than recovering the fees uh, for providing these authoritative acknowledgements. So we leveraged um, or we provide them with a portal where they're able to actually go and see um, the amount uh, that's due to them from providing these authoritative acknowledgements and uh, they're able to just then uh, claim the uh, payment uh, fr from Zonified. So the customers themselves, when they first create the Zonified activity, um, would have bought some credit, and the credit would have been represented as a crypto asset. So they would have bought some uh, credit from ourselves, and, um, and we would be uh, obviously holding that and, and then passing that value on uh, to the local authority when they claimed um, the, the, the fee for, you know, later. Okay. So the fourth thing was uh, this whole issue, um, which was already a very sensitive issue anyway in the public sector, um, in particular in registry services, around data. So who's controlling the data? Um, uh, it was certainly the case that this data in registry services is actually crown copyright. There are lots of issues around how it's used. Um, so our product requires no data uh, whatsoever from the local authority or from the registry services. Um, if there was any data, and which there isn't data stored on the blockchain with our product, but if there was any data, the uh, public are the ones presenting that uh, to the official, and all the official is doing is providing a signature to say that the life event that's represented by the data um, uh, has actually happened with that particular person involved. Okay, so um, there is no data. That was the fourth and most compelling um, proposition, in particular in the light of GDPR, which has since become very high profile and, in fact, in the last few days um, has uh, gone into to, uh, um, law, as we all know. Um, if we've been watching our email inboxes in the last few weeks. So that's it. In summary then, um, they are able to generate additional revenue with no change in process. There's no technology um, involved. They didn't have to do any billing. That was all done for them. And there's no data involved. So 
that's it. That's my vlog. That's my update today. Thanks very much. And um, if you find this interesting, please hit subscribe.